the tutorial. I'm here with special guest Nick Schumann. He is our digital citizenship teacher here at the middle school as well as a tech coach. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about Google Classroom and some of the new items that have come out. Yes. Yeah. Because they're always releasing something new. And that's true. So let's dig into this a little bit. I have a little uh, test class down here called Tech Team where I'm the teacher and Mr. Schumann here is a student just so we can play around with it. And I do suggest you do that um, because there are some new things that come out with Google that you want to test before you roll it out to the entire domain. Yeah, and I think it's important to also know what does it look like from the teacher's point of view, but also what does it look like from the student point of view, just to be aware yeah. of the little nuances and differences that there may be between the two views. That's a good point. So in one of our earlier videos, we talked about organizational units. It is very important to have a test group in your domain as well as test users for this. Uh, process. So here we are inside of a Google Classroom. Um, some UI experiences has changed a little bit. User interface for uh, those of you who don't know what that stands for. Um, I'm in the stream here and one of the things I noticed right away Mr. Schumann is that right here I can now control comments in the stream. I don't have to go to the students tab. Right. This used to be in the students tab. It's not really changed at all. It's just that it's moved to the stream where comments actually take place. Kind of so makes sense. It does make sense. Um, and I think it's important to have that tool there. When I do my class, I have this actually set to uh, only teachers can post and comment to start off because I want to have a conversation with my students about what is appropriate commenting criteria in this environment before we actually turn that on. That's Digital Citizenship 101 it right is. there. And once they demonstrate that, then I'll turn it on because I do think it's important for them to have access to that tool, not just to communicate with me, because they can always do that through Classroom, but to be able to converse with each other, especially if they're problem solving an assignment or strategizing uh, how to um, approach a project I designed. Yeah, uh, that's important. Um, so let's talk about inappropriate for a second. Okay, so right now, um, by default, show delighted, show delighted, show deleted items, they could be delightfully deleted items that are off. Um, Obviously, if a kid makes an inappropriate, or teacher, it's possible, uh, makes an inappropriate comment, I can right here by clicking on the three little Oreos on any comment or any assignment or anything, delete that, right? But I obviously want to delete that to hide it from the stream for our conversation. But if a parent ever came back to me or I had to report this for whatever reason, this is kind of handy because I can now show those deleted items and you would see those inappropriate comments come back into the stream, right? Right. I've had students who have unfortunately not had listened to our conversation about commenting and misused this tool. After we've had a conversation about that, then I will remove those comments from the uh, the stream. Um, but it, like you said, it's nice to know that um, I can access them again yeah. with that tool at any time. So there's a lot more control in the stream. And like I said, the user interface looks a little different here on the web for both teachers and students. I believe that's true on the mobile side of things as well. Yeah. Um, just some, some little things that are coming up. I think that's important because I think Google is trying to make the web and the mobile interface look more like so that there isn't as much of a change between the two environments. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. I saw that in Google calendars and yes. I think they're following suit, which is nice. So if I jump over to the students tab, there's a few things uh, that are slight changes here. Like one of them is include this class in guardian email summaries. Now, I believe that originally if a teacher set up guardian summaries, if that student was enrolled in any other Google class within the domain, they automatically also were invited to those as well currently, right? Yes, I believe so. You so you wouldn't have had to invite those guardians. Uh, for instance, a foreign language teacher could have, and uh, all of those kids would then be invited to all the classrooms they've been enrolled in across York School's domain. Yes, it would domino effect through all the other classes they're enrolled right. in. Yeah. So this sort of gives the teachers some control about whether they want guardian summaries turned on for this particular class or not. Correct. Is it by class or is it everything within your classroom? Do you know? I believe it's by class. Interesting. I like that, though, because there might be some classes that you don't want that involved in. I could certainly see. If you don't see that that's the case, you know, let yeah. us know in the comments below because sharing this information as something that's new um, helps all of us. Absolutely. Um, so another thing, I have it off the default, but I could turn that on. So I had Nick kind of test this out. We have a guardian summary, but if I click on Nick, this gives me that single view of the student. It shows me all the work he's turned in, some of the things he's missing, and one of the assignments he hasn't done yet, which is a little bit old. The nice thing is I can click on this little mail icon at the top, and I can now send an email directly to either the student, the guardians, or the student and the guardians. 
that's that's slick right here without having to go to Gmail. So I can say, all right, I'm sending this to Mr. Schumann and his father, and I'm just going to type in a quick message. Hey, I think you forgot about something there. And the nice thing here is I can also include student work summary. Now, ooh, that's new. That is new. Now they get that already in the Guardian summaries. As long as the parent has accepted, and they have the option to set up daily or weekly occurrences or none, but right, none would obviously yield nothing there. But this kind of gives them that option or gives the teacher that option to manually push out yet another reminder just in case. Right, which could be handy if um, a big project is coming up or has just passed or there's some piece of information, a summary that the teacher would like to um, make sure the parent is aware of more so than just an email to basically have a copy of the correspondence that's been going on and how the student's been doing in the class. Right. Right. The Guardian summary is more of a record of everything going on. This is more of a, hey, I really noticed this. We need to have a chat probably. Right. Which is great because this is closer to the loop, right? I mean, Google Classroom was set up so it was a walled garden. It's not public on the web by any means. Uh, it is a conversation between the student and the teachers. Now we're also allowing Guardians in without seeing everything. They're not in the stream. They're not seeing everything else. Right. Um, but this gives you that one-way street directly from Classroom. Right, and it's regardless of what the parent or guardian has set up as far as their notifications. Right. Um, like you said, there is an option to say, I don't want any summaries as right. the guardian. This but allows the teacher to, to um, manually send uh, a summary yep. if they deemed it necessary. That's perfect. And you don't need a Google or a Gmail account to have parent guardian summaries. Apparently, that's easy for me to say. Parent guardian summaries turned on anymore. Correct. That's big. Yeah, yeah. that is big. It'll work with any email. I'm not going to send this to you or your dad, actually, right now. You've been a good boy. But anyway, um, let's jump back. I think there's, well, the About tab, I don't see much except you noticed it. Go ahead. It, it, the only thing I saw there is that the teacher's box there where it's showing you which teachers have access to this class, that has a much smaller footprint. Yeah. But this, the same features are there. You can invite other teachers. You can change who has the ownership over the class. And, of course, you can uninvite teachers from that panel. Right. But otherwise, it does the same thing. Not yet. I, th I think there might be some new things coming out. There might be. Of course, we can't say anything. We signed NDAs. No. But, but as trusted testers and top contributors, we know there's some things coming down the pike. Um, but certainly, if you see something or don't see something and you want it there, hit the feedback button, right? I mean, it's just easy as coming down and making sure you leave feedback and say, here's something I want or here's something that doesn't quite work for me. They are always listening. I'm, I'm really impressed with how much they listen to our feedback, and it's just a matter of taking that time to let them know both what you want changed, but also maybe things that you really like, like, hey, don't change this because this works awesome. You guys nailed it. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. That's great. Um, if you have anything else you'd like us to chat about, leave them there in the comments uh, or follow us on Twitter. He is at nschuman 78 Yep. That's right. And I'm at ELawson 1977. Love to hear from you. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Later.